Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human body, the human biological system is always a healing and regenerating system. It is always designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call this healing, renewing, regenerating, dynamic system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my website, it's brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment skin health products, including our retinol 5% gel, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. Thanks for joining us on the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. Our number today and every day on the bright side is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. And we welcome your phone calls if you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs. If you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that as well. We're talking hormones. We're talking movement. We're talking action, dynamism. When it comes to health, stagnation is always the enemy. I've been listening to a lot of talk radio lately, getting involved with the whole political thing that's going on. In politics, there's a lot of people who are proud to be conservatives. I listen to conservative talk radio sometimes just to hear what, I'm not, don't consider myself to be conservative, but I like to hear what people are saying. From a health perspective, to conserve means to hold on. Conservatism is almost like a political disease, at least from a definition. Conservatism is political constipation. Conservatism only serves institutions which are stagnant by definition. An institution is something that's locked into place. Conservatism from a political perspective is a type of political illness, really, by definition. Sorry, conservatives, if you're out there. To conserve is to hold on. Why do you want to hold on? What's holding on about? Holding on is about fear. From a health perspective, from a physical perspective, life is action. Life is activity. Life is change. Life is anti-conservatism. Life is movement. And all the life issues, all the health issues that we have, are issues that involve some kind of stagnation of the life force, some kind of obstacle to free-flowing energetics. Usually this involves some aspect of fear. To hold on to things is an aspect of fear. It's an aspect of being scared. Dis-ease, likewise, is an aspect of fear. Dis-ease is an aspect, has an aspect of holding on. It's a kind of obstruction. Disease is stagnation. Health is activity. Health is change. Is it scary? Is change scary? Sure it is. But we're well equipped to handle it. The human body is well equipped to handle change. That's what it really does. That's what life is about. It's about adjusting to change. They call it homeostasis, the ability to adjust to change. Disease is stagnation. Health is activity. Health is movement. Health is dynamism. Mental stagnation maintaining old ideas. I call it old man's disease because it tends to happen as we get older. We hold on to old ideas. That's why it's, it's been said that uh, uh, if, you're not, if you're not a liberal when you're young, you have no heart. But if you are in a middle-aged conservative, you have no head. Meaning, as we get older, we become conservative. As we become, uh, as we become older, it becomes more logical to conserve. Unfortunately, when we conserve, when we hold on, we ossify. We stagnate neurologically. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, a mind that is stretched by new experiences will never go back to its old dimensions. And from a neurological perspective, that means that a mind that is stretched by new ideas grows. It forms permanent new neural connections. We grow, i.e. we anti-age, which is what growing is, it's anti-aging. 
we grow, we anti-age mentally by forming new neural connections. And this idea of the brain forming new connections is the exact opposite of what happens in Alzheimer's disease, which is basically the destruction of neural connections. Hmm, maybe this is a pointer to both the cause and the cure of dementia, of Alzheimer's disease. From a mental perspective, one of the best brain exercises we can, we can do is to think opposite, to think new ideas, to think the opposite of what we think, believe the opposite of what we believe, just as an exercise. F. Scott Fitzgerald said the sign of a healthy mind is the ability to believe two contradictory ideas at the same time. How do you like that? To hold on to two opposite thoughts is actually, or opposing thoughts or opposing ideas is actually a sign of mental health. From an emotional standpoint, depression is also about stagnation. It's even in the word. Depress means to press down. It's to obstruct. Now, I'm not saying sadness, by the way. Sadness is an emotion. Depression is some kind of defective emotion. It's a lack of emotion. Depression is a stuckness. It's a sadness that's not in motion. Sadness is normal. Sadness is a normal emotion. It's part of a, it's a, a responsive emotion. It's part of one of the ways we respond to what's going on in our lives. Depression is actually a non-emotion. It's an e-non-motion. It's a stuckness. We're not in motion. Sadness is, is a fluctuating feeling. Depression is a stuckness. Emotion, by definitions, are supposed to change. Emotion means to move out, to be in motion. Emotions are supposed to be in motion. When emotions are healthy, they fluctuate based on our experiences. They're in motion. When we're depressed, or we have a, some kind of defective emotion, we're stuck. In this way, emotional disease, like mental health issues, are about stagnation. Like brain health and neurological issues are about stagnation. Movement is the best antidepressant there is. Depress, lack of movement. Antidepressant, movement. If you're depressed, no, notice how hard it is if you're feeling depressed. Get on a rebounder. Notice, notice how hard it is to maintain your depression when you're on a rebounder. Or notice how hard it is to maintain your depression when you're on a treadmill. What do you, if you're depressed, you know you don't feel like going on a treadmill. You don't feel like uh, jumping on a rebounder. Why? Because if you got on the rebounder and got on the treadmill, you wouldn't be depressed anymore. We don't need drugs. We need activity. We need action. We need movement. How ironic is it that most antidepressants actually slow us down, shut us down, stagnate us even more? It's impossible to be depressed when you're performing some kind of vigorous activity. From a physical perspective, movement of blood, the dynamic nature of blood creates electrical energy. Electrical energy that sustains biology, sustains life. Movement is life. Movement of, of our lymphatic fluids oxygenates and nutriates and detoxifies. Movement of muscles likewise generates electrical energy and improves blood circulation and improves lymphatic circulation. Everywhere you turn, movement means health. Action means health on all levels. Mental, emotional, physical. Health involves action. It involves doing something, even if that doing something is calming down. Even if that doing something is a sort of non-doing, Chinese medicine they call this non-doing, the action of non-action, non-action as an action in Chinese medicine, it's called wu-wei, W-U-W-E-I. From a perspective of physical health, moving the body helps us control our weight, helps us reduce our risk of heart disease. Moving the body reduces our risk of metabolic syndrome and diabetes. Moving our body reduces cancer risks. Moving our body strengthens our muscles, strengthens our joints, strengthens our bones. Moving our body improves mental health, improves mood. Moving our body is anti-aging. Moving the body is pro-longevity. And from a chemical perspective, from a biochemical perspective, this movement depends on two classes of chemicals, which we've been talking about. Hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. On the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a line open for you. We'll get your calls here just a moment or two, so hang tight. 
if you want to purchase any of the, my Truth Treatment products, Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to join the Brightside Ben team or purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, and sign up right off the website or purchase any of the Longevity products right off the website as well. All right, so we're talking about movement, activity. This is really what health is about. It's about action. It's about movement. It's about activity. It's about doing something. Stagnation is always the enemy. And from a chemical perspective, from a biochemical perspective, the biochemistry of the body, the movement, the action in the body depends on two classes of chemicals, the enzymes and the hormones. Now, the actual molecules of activity, the, the, the molecules that carry the life, those are the enzymes. And some unbelievable, miraculous way, nobody knows how this happens, some miraculous way they speed up or they catalyze, it's called catalysis or catalyzing, enzymes speed up or catalyze chemical reactions by millions and millions of times. Chemistry would not happen without the energizing action of the enzymes. Enzymes are the life force. Essentially, they are what carry the life force. And this is why eating enzymes is so important. This is why supplementing with enzymes is so important when it comes to health. In my opinion, our enzymeless foods and our lack of enzymes is the hidden cause of our degenerative disease crisis, or at least a major hidden cause of our degenerative disease crisis. As we figured out how to create enzymeless foods, that's what processing foods does. It creates enzymeless foods. If you say to yourself, well, why would anybody want to create enzymeless foods? Well, it turns out that foods that don't have enzymes last forever. They don't break down. Enzymes digest foods. This is why vegetables go bad so quickly. This is why meat goes bad so quickly. But when you take the enzymes out, the food is dead. That's what a processed food is. A processed food is a dead food. And our dependence on processed food, our dependence on lifeless food, our dependence on dead enzymeless food for most of our calories has had a disastrous effect on our health. If you want to turn your health challenge around really quickly, start focusing on enzyme-rich foods. Use supplemental enzymes. Check out brightsidehealthproducts.com. You'll see a bunch of really, really good, high-quality systemic enzymes. Use your ultimate enzymes from Longevity. This is the benefits. This is one of the benefits of using your ultimate enzymes, which are digestive enzymes, on an empty stomach. They'll actually upregulate. They'll actually stimulate energy inside the body. Enzymeless foods and our dependence on enzymeless foods has been one of the greatest health disasters in the history of man. From a physical perspective, a case could be made that our dependence on enzymeless foods for most of our calories is the ultimate reason for our poor health. And this is why sprouts and veggies and enzyme-rich foods can be so powerful as a health strategy. Enzymes are important. They're the life. But the life itself is sparked. It's initiated by our arousing chemicals. And those are the hormones. The hormones are the arousers. They arouse the enzymes into activity. They spark the enzymes into activity. Scientists call it a lock and key mechanism. And a hormone is like a key that contacts locks that are located on cells. And these hormone keys open up the locks and an enzyme action is initiated. That's basically how life happens, at least in, inside of a cell. Hormones contact the locks or the openings or the sockets or whatever you want to call it. I sometimes call it a doorbell on the outside part of a cell. They press the doorbell, open the lock, whatever metaphor you want to use, and an enzyme reaction occurs. This can happen outside of the blood, and that usually means a digestive type substance, also outside of the skin, in the case of pheromones. Pheromones and hormones that act inside the digestive system. Without, without requiring the blood for their, for, their, uh, for their actions. Those are called exocrine hormones. The type of hormones that work inside the blood, we've talked about these a lot, those are the endocrine hormones. The endocrine hormones are the hormones that we think about when we think about hormones. They float in the blood, and then they contact specific cells, initiating some kind of enzyme activity. When it comes to the skin, the connection between the epidermis, the dermis, the skin structures, and the hormone glands 